When Darius and his family come across an old house during a forest walk in the snowfall, his youngest son Marcus notices that there is a little dog in the garden. When Darius wants to jump the fence to get to it, a voice coming from inside the house yells at him to get lost. But Darius was not planning on listening to it. But when he gets to the dog and sees what is below it, he wishes that he had listened to the warning. Before we start, can we get this video to 1000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Even though the voice from the house was screaming at Darius and his family to go away, he could not leave this poor dog out there in the cold. He had to do something. Against his better judgment, he jumped the fence leaving his scared family on the other side and everyone wondering just what was going on. When he finally made his way to the poor little dog, it was barely moving but still looked like it was in very good condition. Darius nearly dropped the animal out of pure shock. He could barely believe it. What the hell was going on here? As the house was fairly remote, nobody passed the house every single day, so nobody realized that the animals were in the same place all the time. The thought that they were just all together outside playing and lying in the sun. It was really normal for a dog to like the hot weather and the sun, but what happened in the winter? Then the weather started to take a turn to the worst and it was getting colder and colder every day. People started to get truly worried for the little dog being outside. From time to time, some people tried to pet him and lure him to the edge of the fence, but the animal was always just lying at that specific place in the yard. One day some passers-by considered climbing over the low fence and giving the owner of the house a piece of their mind. But this was still rural America and the sign with trespassers will be short on sight could very well not be an empty promise. As the time passed, the temperatures started to fall even further, and thus concerns over the health of the dog that was always outside should have started to rise. The first snow started to fall, but the dog was still outside, there was nobody that could help him or give him something to protect himself from the snow. No one seemed to want to venture out into the cold to see what was happening in the neighborhood. Nobody except one family. There was one family that truly cared for this dog. The Thompson family had been in a great mood ever since the first snowflakes had started to fall and they were making optimal use of the opportunity. So one day they decided to take a long walk in the forest. It was a day in which the snowfall was minimal and the cold was tolerable. So they wore some warm clothes and went on their way. They had not even taken this path before as the forest hike in the summertime or wintertime had not sounded appealing to them at all. So the family was not that familiar with the old house and the dog in the backyard. So that day would be the first time that they would meet the cute dog. The first time that they passed the place, they almost missed the little dog completely. The whole garden in the front yard was covered with a thin layer of snow and it was hard to distinguish what was below it. But the dog was there, outside sitting at the same spot in the snow. He didn't move at all. The person that saw the dog was Marcus, the youngest member of the family. He had been keeping a close eye on the house as he had not expected to see it here. Then out of the corner of his eye, he saw something moving in the garden, a very faint movement, but immediately caught his attention. His eyes went wide when he saw what caused it. It was not that easy to see this dog among all the snow so. When the boy saw him, was really impressed. Immediately, he started to shout to his dad, who was nearby dad. Dad, there is a dog in the garden. His father, named Darius, with a look of pure confusion, looked where his son was pointing and he immediately saw the dog as well. He was really confused at first because he didn't expect to see a dog outside. Below the snow, there was the dog, and unknown to the family at that time. It was still in the same spot it had always been. The second he even put his hand on the fence, a loud voice emerged from the old house. Darius felt a little terrified because he knew that what he was doing was illegal. The man inside the house shouted to him, get off the property now or you will be shot. Darius froze for a second and pulled his hand back. So he decided to yell at him back that whoever was threatening him should come to get the poor dog out of the freezing cold or else he would call animal protection. But when he told all that, he had no response. He quickly came up with a plan right then and there and gestured for his family to follow his lead. 
He yelled at the house that they were going to leave, and they continued walking into the forest. But when they got out of direct sight of the house, Darius turned around. He told his family to wait right there while he was going to try and find a way around the house, so maybe he could get into the back. He was sneaking around on his knees, taking cover behind the snow-covered bushes. He got closer and closer to the house, till he ended up sitting against the back of it, and beside him was a door. This was the only option, and the only way he was going to get in. But was it a good idea to enter? As silently as possible, Darius put his hand on the door handle and tried to pull it down. To his great surprise, the door actually opened up. But was he actually going to go in? He managed to open the door without making any sound, so he was pretty confident whoever was inside did not hear a thing, as he also did not hear anybody yelling at him. Darius knew this was a dumb idea, but he had gotten so far now that he did not just want to give up. The house was very dark and quiet. Darius stupidly had left his phone in his wife's bag, so he also had no flashlight to look around. He slowly and mostly by feel started searching for the stairs to the second floor. It was obvious that nobody was on this floor. But just what was it that he was starting to realize as he crept slowly along? Well, the second floor felt a whole lot like the first. Now that Darius knew that he was in no danger of being shot, he could safely make his way to the dog in the garden. Darius quickly made his way out of the back door of the house again and ran around the building. He wasn't going to try going in through the back if he didn't have to. He could go through the front, closer to the dog. He tried to jump over the fence into the front garden again, only to be greeted by a familiar voice. Get off the property now or you will be shot. It was again immediately after he touched the fence and in the exact same tone of voice. Now Darius was even more sure. This had to be a recording. He felt pretty comfortable with his decision now, because there couldn't possibly be anyone inside the house with a gun. With full confidence, Darius jumped over the fence and approached the still fairly moving dog. Now he was finally able to take care of the poor dog and get it inside and out of the cold. He would take it home with him. Darius figured that there was not a moment to lose. Even if the message in the house was just a recording, he didn't want to be here in case someone did show up. So he got down on his knees, put his arms around the dog, and tried to pull it off the ground. He wanted to the poor animal to his family so that they could together bring it to the vet and have it checked out. Maybe they were not too late. It seemed like the dog, which stopped moving completely when Darius had picked it up, was stuck by something. The dog suddenly came loose and Darius flew backward. When he got up and looked at what had been holding the dog in place, he could barely believe what he was seeing. He was stunned by the sight of it, and the dog that had flown out of his arms as well. Was this really what all of it had been about? There were electricity cables that had apparently just come loose, and when he looked at the bottom of the dog, he saw that they had actually come from his belly. This is not a dog, this is a robot. Darius was surprised and had no idea what this could possibly mean. A robot dog in the front yard. Not knowing what to do now, Darius ended up calling the police. He was hoping that they would be able to give him some more information as to what the hell was happening here. And maybe then he would understand why there was a robot dog sitting in the front of this abandoned house. What ended up being the situation was that there used to live an old and very secluded man here he always loved animals, but got to a point where he was no longer able to take care of them. Even still, he wanted to have animals, and especially dogs, around him for the rest of his life. His whole house was full on robotic animals, and the dog outside was one of them. But when he passed away, these animals just stayed behind to move by themselves until the power would be cut off to the house. The police ended up closing the house down and having the power cut off. The family was also informed that they could claim ownership of the place, but nobody ever came forward. They didn't seem to care as much as the old man did. Now the house is mostly a place of legend and most of the electronic animals have been stolen by the youth of the nearby city, leaving behind a shell of a house as the last memory of an old man that really loved animals. And a few interesting stories for families like Darius, who tried to save the poor animals there.